Thầy gọi lấy vui Thầy gọi lấy Thầy gọi lấy Hi, Norfolk Boy here, Keep on Atrashen, and here's part four of my making a model railway layout from scratch. And uh, just to follow on from the last video where I was talking about um, LEDs, as well as other stuff, I just thought I'd begin by just showing you the effect of these LEDs and how much they really make a difference to your layout. Just let's turn the lights out here, hopefully. We'll then get a little bit of darkness, the darkness, and we'll switch on the lights. And as you see, I went for the warm kind of coloured LEDs, and that kind of make it a little bit more realistic looking, I guess. And so let's run the trains round for a few seconds. And there we are. So, so far so good not too bad not too bad for a beginner I guess I'll just bring them into the station voila okay Just a little bit here of what else I've been up to is here is the uh, bridge that I got given luckily but of course you can buy them make them um, also on the website that I mentioned in the last video um, this chap has got one that you can make up from card of a, a bridge walk over an enclosed one actually here you can see I've um, added some lovely little uh, benches these are great, they're quite expensive I suppose when you think about it, but they're for Metcalf again. Um, I don't know, say five or six quid I think, something like that, but boy do they look good. I mean you can, you know, you can try and make them yourself, but these things really are rather cute. As you can see, if I can get a little bit more of a, a close up of them. You know, they really do look the business. Uh, so quite like them. They're on the Metcalf website that I also mentioned, I do believe, on my last video. And also, I've been messing about making my own bushes. Um, so round here, at the moment, you can see these bushes that I made myself from scarring pads. Um, obviously, that's not what you can see at the moment, but I'll be showing you in this video exactly how you make those. Um, because, boy, does that save you a bit of money. So all in all, moving on, where I'm going to be doing a little bit more scenery and coming up with some ideas that hopefully will give other people that watch these videos some ideas for themselves. So in this video, I'm going to be concentrating on scenery. And um, I've had a few ideas that I've found on the internet and also a few ideas of my own. Um, so I'm... Uh, going to share as many of them as I can and how I did them on this particular episode or video and um, if you like them then that's grand you can go ahead and try them yourself if not I'm sure you can always find other ideas from other people but this is what I've been up to and I've been very busy and what I've actually been doing is I've been building this bridge just over here as you can see just move him out of the way so there it is I mean there's still some work to be done on it but at the moment this is as far as I've got and I'll be going through how I did all of that what materials I made and here's some a few trees and bushes that I made or made to look much better than they were put it that way and then um, this bush that's running along the side here also I created myself which I will explain how in this episode and this little gizmo here 
Now this little gizmo here is based on something that I've seen on the internet that um, I've discovered is rather expensive for what it is. Um, so I decided to make one of my own. So this is a ballast applicator. Well, that's what they call their ones that they have on the internet. Ridiculous price for these things. So I use some of this plastic sheet and I come up with one of my own. It's a bit cumbersome, but a little bit of tape round to make it stronger as well, but it works. And I'll demonstrate that now. So just to um, show you, um, basically there's some very small nicks taken out from here and here that sits on the rails. Roughly the same as the bought ones are. Um, and then you can just pop it onto the rails, get your ballast. In this case, I've got a nice bucket full that I got off the internet. Fill her up. So, and then just slowly run it around the track. And voila, there you have a nice, neat sort of distribution of your ballast, which I think works quite well. I guess that's the whole principle of the thing. And once you've done that, you can then, with a brush and your finger, Take off the access, gently spreading it around. I have a brush to do that, but you get the general idea. And then of course, um, after that, you can then apply your glue, your PVA glue, which I'll uh, show you in a minute, and um, wait for it to dry. And there's your ballast done. Okay, so put some PVA. Mixed sort of 50-50 is what I've been using anyway. Um, I've put it in one of these old bottles that I had because um, it's got a nice little nib on there, but you can use these little um, squeezy kind of um, applicators that you can um, suck it into and then squirt gently on, but this works a little bit quicker. And basically, don't be scared of doing this. When I first did this, I thought, I don't know, shoving loads of wet glue all over your track is not much of a good idea, but it works. And if you get any on your track, it's not that difficult to clean it off. Now I'm not worrying too much about this side obviously at the moment because <coughs> I'm going to be filling in the middle but my glue is a little bit wet really that needs to be a little bit uh, drier but anyway uh, you get the gist of the idea and then when this glue finally sinks in and dries it goes hard and then it doesn't go anywhere which is brilliant because the worst thing is, is this stuff going all over the place. I also, because I didn't really do what I should have done before I put the glue on and just wiped or brushed some of that over, um, I did make this little thing as well the other day with a couple of grooves in and that kind of helps get it off the track. And around it's not difficult anyway to to make the the track dry again really but once that's dried off you can always use a piece of wet and dry just to run over the track again um, and it'll be fine absolutely fine um, I've done plenty of this now and it all seems to work so but of course on the internet there's lots of other people doing this and they'll show you their way of doing it. Some put it on um, with a spray and put it in one of these spray applicators. Uh, but anyway, this method seems to be working for me, so that's the one I've chosen. And if we look over here, where I've done it before, and there it is all hard and settled. So there you go. Okay, so basically all I did really is go on the 
eBay where they sell um, some of these applicators and just really stole the design. <laughs> stole the design and made the best of what I could out of plastic sheeting. Uh, plastics, I, I mean, you can buy this stuff on eBay as well um, in th different thicknesses and, and what have you. It's, it's, um, this one's just made out of decent sort of thickness of probably about a mil, I'd say, um, a plastic sheeting. And I put some extra bits around the edges, um, which were just bent, not cut in individual pieces, just to make it a bit stronger. And another piece of tape round. It's, it's just something that uh, I just knocked together really to do the same job that you have to pay a fair bit of money to buy one with. Um, having said that, if you've got the money, then why not buy one? But if not, make one yourself. Um, if you don't want to be spending too much money, you'd rather be spending your money elsewhere on other bits and pieces for your railway. Okay, so making your own hedges, I should say. I've been saying bushes, but hedges is much better. Um, you will need some scat for this, um, but let's face it, this is fairly cheap on eBay. And then for about two pounds, if not less than that, sometimes from the pound shop, you can buy these scarring pads, which are absolutely perfect for bushes, although not to begin with until you've done something to them. So I'm just showing you here, even though it's rather messy, is to just shove some scatter in a bowl or a container, put the glue all over your piece of scar and pad that you've cut to whatever length you require. As I said, bit messy, use your finger to shove it all over the place, have a bowl of hot water or something somewhere to wash your hands with after, something to wipe your, your surface that you're doing this over, and then dip it into the scar. Now I'm not the only one that's doing, doing this on the internet, there's somebody else that shows how to do this, this is where I got the idea from, so um, I think it's a great idea, it's a, it's a quick and easy idea and it certainly works, so. So make sure you get it all over as much as you can, um, the more glue the better really. The end's done as well. And voila, we have some neat bushes, hedges, whatever you want to call them. Of course you can make them taller if you want, you can even stick two together and make them a bit wider. But they do come out rather effective. Now moving on to trees. If you're really lucky to come across some of this old underlay, then splitting it actually comes up with a great texture for making grand really. To make a little bit of a hill, I've just used polystyrene and used an old cheap polystyrene cutter I bought off eBay. So again, with these trees, I bought some plastic ones uh, for two ninety nine for a packet full of about twenty, uh, and I thought, wow, that's cheap, but they do look a little bit plasticky. So here we go. This is the way to do it. Same kind of principle as the um, hedges. Um, is to just dump a load of PVA glue on, as much as you like, don't be worried. Lovely stuff. It is a bit messy, but there you go. I used a brush here, but you can use your finger, just dab it into the, into the plastic sort of green part of the trees. And again with um, a kind of scatter or, uh, or flock even that some people call it. <clears throat> you can just um, pour on top of this tree and it'll make it look a little bit more full and exciting rather than this horrible shiny plastic on them. Dump plenty on, don't do what I'm doing here and put it all over the glue you just dropped on the uh, 
paper, mind you. You do it somewhere where it's dry so you can pour it back off and into the, uh, the canister. Just me making silly mistakes. But I did say I'd show all my silly mistakes, so there you go. Um, now I'm going to try and poke it into this um, the, this hill that I've made. Um, this underlay is a little bit tough to push through, so I think I'm going to have to make a hole in a minute. Just through the underlay, it's quite tough. And then the branch should push, or the tree trunk I should say, point at the bottom should push through into the polystyrene, which it has done. Just pour a little bit of glue in there later also, just to help. I'll try and retrieve some of this scatter again <laughs> and pour it back into, uh, into my pot. Here it is again, done the proper way, but speed it up. Benny Hill style. Scatter over a piece of paper that's dry this time. Voila. And now we have some trees. Just keep them in place by dropping a little bit of glue around the bottom part of the trunk of the tree. Then after that you can uh, use some scatter or flock, put a little bit of glue on the hills and uh, make them look a little bit more realistic. Then I've put a little bit of matte brown paint around the trunk of the trees just to uh, take away the plastic part of it and make it look a little bit more realistic. And here they are again, the end result. Um, I'll just pop a few little uh, bits of foliage and bushes around the outside so you can see that they're not kind of removable um, later on. Um, obviously if you can't get a hold of any of this underlay you can make hills out of plenty of other stuff. Um, put a little bit of paper over your, your polystyrene or any other kind of material you think might look good. Good old paper mache still works. And then we move on to the bridge that I decided to make so that it would look like the road goes over and uh, I'll have to do some back scenery to join this nice little old building that I wanted in the corner. I've also placed my handmade uh, post office there that I got from that other gentleman's website. Uh, so I'll be having that there and uh, obviously doing lots more bits of pieces of scenery around there. But at the moment the bridge is pretty much done. It's detachable. So if I can just lift that up and over, so we can get a closer look. And here it is. So again, not quite finished yet, but as you can see, same principle. Again, here's this underlay, um, which you can do all sorts to. Uh, I've bought some bushes to go on here later. So I started this by downloading the porthole that um, is on this website I'm showing the link to below and the free printable kits that that nice gentleman has given away for free. I did have to adjust the size of mine a little bit to make it a little bit wider for my trains to get through smoothly, but not too hard really, just a little bit of extra brick paper that he supplies anyway on his website. Um, then after I did that, I pretty much used the same idea as before for the hills with some polystyrene, this time some polystyrene installation I had laying around, but ordinary polystyrene will do, I'm sure, and the scatter. Um, and then once I'd built all of that, obviously I put in the extra walls so the people who are driving over don't go flying over the hills. And I'll now, of course, also be able to add some bushes and some foliage there along the side as well to make it look even more realistic. There's the polystyrene underneath. Then the next move was the roads. So uh, I've decided to do roads from some 400 grit wet and dry sandpaper. The idea again that I picked up off the internet from somebody else thinks a fabulous idea. Um, as you can see when you run your fingers over it it makes it look all worn and, and old. A little bit more like a road should look really. Then off the same website I downloaded some of his path. Um, you can use any kind of path you like really, but uh, I decided to use some of his and uh, ran it down the side for people to uh, be able to get over the bridge by foot. And of course they can do a little bit of train spotting. I also used a little bit of uh, black powder paint I managed to get hold of to uh, go around the tunnel porthole 
um, just to give it the effect that um, you know a steam engine has passed under there many a times, or even a diesel as well, and make it look a little bit dirty. Um, I made it detachable so um, I can actually get to this point motor if it ever goes wrong, so I can just lift it up and check out what the problem is. And the weathering that I was talking about with the powder paint, I'll probably go into that in another video and weather this nice clean station that I built. It's looking way too clean at the moment. So that's it really. Thank you very much for watching this um, latest video of mine. I hope I've given you some good ideas. If not, I'm sure you'll be able to find some more great ideas all over the web. In the meantime, I'm going to keep trying to come up with some more ideas. Um, if you'd like to leave any comments or subscribe, please do. And I'll see you in the next video. I got a load.